bird on a tree. The world being in the midst of a I'm pandemic has meant months here. of self isolation, new normals, new routines, and no travel. For two souls filled with wanderlust, it has been long. Necessary, but definitely long. The world is slowly starting to open up again, cautiously for some and full throttle for others. We veer on the cautious side, so I picked a local treasure I hadn't visited in years. Sunblock, swimsuits, and a picnic, and we were off for a small but much needed adventure. The day was hot, and upon arrival, it seemed we were not the only ones with this idea, but we managed to find a quiet spot of our own to dip our toes, skip some rocks, and to have our first picnic of the season while the black flies had theirs. This beautiful bridge is the last of its kind in the world. I love old things and the stories that come with them. Built in 1861, it's the oldest covered bridge in Canada. Some call it Percy Bridge, but I've always known it as the Power Score Bridge. I grew up 15 minutes from it and spent many summers camping as a girl guide at the camp right beside it. Like all old things, there comes a time when some will deem them no longer useful. It was slated to be demolished and replaced with a boring concrete structure, but it had a hero. Well, many heroes, but from what I've read in an article by Robert Galbraith, it started with a local, James Gavin, who started a movement of like-minded friends who weren't having it. And thanks to them and all their efforts, this lovely dame is still standing with new bones and a shiny coat of paint. She also graces a Canadian postage stamp, is a Canadian National Heritage Site, as well as a Quebec Heritage Site. Imagine, all because a man used his fist as a gavel to say he objected and others joined in because they too saw it needed rescuing. Wherever would our future be without the giants of our past? The secret of getting ahead is getting started. Mark Twain Finally, after months of deliberating, researching, second-guessing, highs and lows, I am here. It's scary, it's exciting, it's unsure, and that's okay. Frankly, I'm a little surprised I didn't back out of the process already. At a point, though, we just have to jump in, don't we? Armed with enough information that we don't sink, but not too much that we won't jump which is what I'm doing or I'll forever be in research mode or wallowing in the dreaded abyss of what ifs. Plus, I've always been more of a hands-on learner anyways. The goal is to learn new things and enjoy the process. So I'm trying not to be a perfectionist about this because frankly, you could endlessly tweak your words, images, and song selections. When you research starting a blog or a vlog, some of the reoccurring questions that you'll see all the time is, what is your niche? How will you help others? What is your goal? It's overwhelming. So for now, I'll leave those questions on the back burner. I'll work it out along the way. It's a journey after all, and I really want to keep it fun. I've been living a sort of creative drought for several years now. I used to love to write short stories and songs and I always kept a diary, but somewhere along the way that all disappeared. It's a process trying to reconnect with that side of myself. Maybe we won't be friends again, but I'm really hoping we will. I miss my creative side. 
I love the idea of a vlog because I love taking pictures and filming. I love editing and bringing everything together. It's a happy place for me. Plus, my little guy is growing up so fast. What a great space to collect our adventures together and look back on years from now. So here's to getting uncomfortable, to stretching myself to see what is possible, to learning new things, seeing new places, meeting new people, and hopefully inspiring a few others along the way to do the same. <laughs>